So welcome back everyone. Uh, last time we were continuing our discussion about game development. Today I want to discuss uh, collision detection a little bit. And so in this example that I gave you here, what I wanted you guys to do is to implement a function that takes two circles and returns true if they overlap, that is to say if there is a collision, or false if there isn't one. Did anyone was anyone actually able to do this? Yes, sir. So you have to take the coordinates and find the uh, distance between the coordinates. Yes. Centers, and then see if that's bigger or less than the number of two red radiuses. John, what else do? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Ne exactly. And how do you do that? How do you find the distance between two points on a plane like this? Use math. Use math. Not bad. What kind of math? Geometry. Geometry. Getting closer, there is a theorem. What's the theorem? For Pythagorean theorem, yeah. Okay, so let's look. Before we write code, let's visualize this. You have two circles. A circle and a circle. Okay? They have the centers here and here. Let's... We need to find this distance here and then make sure that that distance is less than the, the addition of these two radiuses. This radius and this radius. Right? Yeah, it's easy. It's easy? Okay. So if we know this and we know this, because if you do this and this, you can get that. Right? Okay, so first, how do we find this? Right, so circle 1 dot x mi minus circle 2 dot x. That will give me what? Which one? This one, right? Okay. Okay, and? We must also find the rise. Circle dot y minus one dot y minus circle two dot y. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, now that, that will give me this, right? Now I need to find this. Exactly. Now it so happens that we have this object called math that has attached to it a whole bunch of really nice functions, including SQRT, square root. So we need to find the square root of, go. Run times run. Plus rise times rise. Cool. This will give me the distance, um, cost distance. Okay, and what I need to do is return if the distance is greater than or less than the less than or equal to. If it's equal to, do you? It's up to you. If you want the equal to consider collision. Okay, it's like the circles are right. Th okay, yeah, equal to. Um, what? This and this combined. Right? What is this? It's the radius. It's the r. Right. So circle one dot r plus circle two dot r. Cool. We did it. Question though. We said circle one and circle two. Right. What if this was circle one and this was circle two? Wouldn't if we do subtraction, in other words, if this was circle one, this was circle two, and we did subtraction, we would get this value no problem. But if we swap them, we can take the absolute exactly. Guess what, where we can find a function that will do that. For, actually, let's write a function that will do that. Negative times negative. You're okay. Yes, he's he, okay. So these guys are actually right. 
Because here we, we square them, so if they're... Exactly. If negative times negative will give you positive, and positive times positive will give you positive. You're right. But just for clarity, because someone debugging this code will get confused with the negative, it just so happens that this formula produces that, you're right. But just to be clear about our code, let's write a function that gives us absolute value. Const abs. It gives, it takes some number, num. What do I do? Right, how do I, so tell me. Or, yeah, or num times minus ones, exactly. In all other case, oh sorry, let me open the curlies. Okay, in all other cases we just return num. Right? Okay, so we could just call apps with this result and call apps with this result. Yay! Collision detection. Um, how could we use this collision detection? Imagine two balls bouncing around and when they hit each other, we know because we can run this function, right? So in our update function or update data function, we could iterate over the circles and check to see if they collide. And in that way, we know, okay, these two circles hit each other. And then we can do something like make them change color or make one explode because the other one hit it, and, right? You can do all kinds of interesting stuff there. Yes? It's going to make a circle and make a change. Okay, in that case, what I, there are lots, so collision detection is a whole, there's a lot to it, but the basic answer to that is I would just draw a box around the circle, draw a box around the box, and then just compare the two boxes. Which actually is the second thing I wanted to talk to you about, which is the collision of bounding areas or rectangles. So suppose I have two rectangles. Oh no. Okay. I, so the circle ones are okay, right? You know how to, okay, good. So now the rectangle. Wow, that's ugly, okay. Suppose I have two rectangles. How do I know if there's an intersection between the rectangles? Okay, so... We can find their... Surface area. Okay, and then how can we use that? If the sum of the surface area is some constant number, then uh, if, that, if the sum of their uh, surfaces is less than that constant number, then it means uh, they have some constant But the problem with surface area is it gives you the size, right? But it doesn't give you location. Yeah, it, it doesn't. That's the problem with your algorithm. Keep going. Give me another example. You have to check the coordinates of the end and the beginning of the first instance. Perfect. Okay, so what he's saying is, first thing you might want to do is find the x that is the smallest, which in this case is this one. So that's, the x represents this, bound, this line here, right? And compare that to the x plus width of here. And make sure that this is to the left of this, which is true, it is, right? This is on this side, this is on this side, right? But then what you have to do is compare this one to this one and make sure that this one is greater than this one. It is not, therefore they don't intersect. But, If it was like this, right? Now we're comparing this one to this one. And they do. So this is greater than this, that's correct. And this is greater than this, that's correct. So as far as x is concerned, we are intersecting. You do the exact same thing for y. You compare this one to this one, and then this one to that one. And if they all, all four cases line up, then you know you have an intersection. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I think you need to do something like this for your homework, right? Because when your things are bouncing around, you need to know when you've hit something. When your hero touches something, it dies, right? This is how you can find out. So all you have to do is turn what I just did into, pro into a program and you're done. Uh, questions or confusions about this? It's clear? Okay, good. Okay, let's do something fun. And then we'll do something that's a little bit less fun. <laughs> yeah, let's build one more. Did you have a question? Go. Okay, so he's saying, look, I have two objects where the coordinates keep changing, right? But remember that they change every time you, every time you call update, it changes one time, right? Then it changes again one time. Okay, so during that update, when you've shifted it, that's when you check. Update function matches the nomad collision detection. So the same code that moves them, that same function can contain the collision detection. Yeah? Cool. Yes? If it's not difficult, can you explain I will. Uh, do, yes? Uh huh. I see what you're saying. You're right. If, if it's guaranteed that the two are equal width, you can do some tricks and minimize your code. What I suggest is don't take that shortcut because if you write that function and it works, you can use that function again in the next assignment when you're also going to be doing detection anyway. So you might as well just do it. You, you understand? Um, okay, I'll, I'll get back to you. Other questions before we continue? Okay, so the question that we had was, huh? Okay, clearly someone didn't get this. That's fine. Um, so let's go over this collision stuff one more time just to be clear. By the way, can people in the back see what I'm drawing? The marker is visible? Okay. Okay, one moment. <clears throat> okay. Actually, you know what? Let me draw this. Let me draw this here. One second. I think I have a Miropa. Uh, teaching dev cloud node draw diagram. Here we go. Okay, cool. Okay, everyone can see what I'm drawing, right? Okay, we have that and we have this. And let's do something crazy. Okay. There. Okay. So what we want to do is know if the two intersect, right? This would be an intersection. This, of course, is not, right? Uh, you could also do here, right? Anytime they have an intersection, that's a collision, right? So the question is, how do we detect the collision? Here's what we do. First, we get the minimum x. Is the minimum x this one or this one? What is the minimum? The first one, right? Okay. So we compare this line, this x. This x means this line, right? Okay. This x to the x plus width of the other one. So we compare this line here against this line here, right? And we have to make sure that this is less than this. Is that the case, yes or no? Yes. It is. Okay, so so far we're assuming everything's fine. We move on to the next step, which is that we compare this line here to this line here. Okay, and what we need to make sure is that this is less than that. Is that the case here? No, no collision. Now, let's create a collision. What about now? This is less than this, good, and this is less than this. As far as we're concerned, the x has a collision, right? 
But now we do the same for y. We compare this one to this one. True, this is less than this, fine. But then this has to be less than this. It is not, so we have no collision. But now let's do the same thing. Is this less than this? Yes. Is this less than this? I need to know. Is this less than this? Yes. Okay. Is this one less than this one? You know, the numbers grow this way. So this value is smaller than this value. Okay. And is this one less than this one? Let's count. One, two, three, four, four and a half. This is five. Sorry, this, this one is much more. Yes? Okay, we're comparing this one to this one. Okay, so four and a half to five. Five is bigger than four. So it is. So all four cases are true. That means we have a collision. Yes, sir. Amena Mirope height as was the Ixa Tegrika, Vernas Vesnum. Ixa Ecusi Archcoma. Arch? Zach. So we take the X and the X, okay? High tinge cup near for X ness by I turn joke. Width I think and line it sooner at the cat your nose. Okay, okay, let's just just tell me the X, because if I understand the X, I just do the same for Y, right? <laughs> Ayo, ice, ice line is sooner. Uh huh. Is get a chair? By the Sara line is sooner, but he met a constant Sara line is sooner. Chemosco, Spassi, S. Sartness Vesnum, or S. Sartness Vesnum, chair? Okay. Winches Hamamatum? I think and Sa. Uner Kevin Ha Skatsa by yet a sense lini. But is is get a sense lini? Uzmema sem ne qua as that algorithm gash hati, waki if it avali shot at a drabanak. Imtar berakum and time sense tennis chosati fa pitk. Ufso. No chosat yev. Yeah? Um, so his suggestion is a bit, it, it will also work, it's just a bit more involved. That's all. Um, and whenever you write code, what makes one solution, by the way, more elegant than another is very often its size. The smaller your code, the better. Yeah? So do whatever is simpler. Cool? Um, other questions or concerns about hit test? We're good? Okay. All right, so let's do something. Did, were you satisfied? Okay. So let's do something fun. Let's create a canvas. I forgot, how do I do that? I can create an ID, cool. I could give it a size. Uh, let me give it a size in pro, in a code. Okay. Const canvas is documents that get element by ID. My canvas. And then const context is canvas dot get context two D. Oh, sorry. Yes. Alert. Yes. Go. 
If we change today to 3D, it would be uh, three dimensional canvas. The canvas remains the same, the context changes. So the context will give you three-dimensional functions instead of two-dimensional functions. So instead of like fill rect, for example, which takes x and y, in a three-dimensional context, it would take a z. That's good such, right? So you get different functions. Okay. Um, okay, so, yes. X, y, depth. Well, it depends on, you flip the camera. Right, so it depends on which way you're looking. You just—it's just a third dimension. Just Where it grows depends on. No. Okay, you can think of it this way: Igrika sensa, Iksa sensa, Zin sensa. But it all depends. Exactly, it's this way. But it depends on where you're looking at it from. If you turn the camera, the view, now you're looking at it where X is this way and Z is this way. So it depends on where you're looking at. That's a whole different. Yes. Can we use more than one canvas? Can you? Yeah. Just make another canvas element. Yes. Make as many as you want. Yes. Uh, other questions? Okay. For, so first of all, let me give my canvas dot width a width. So let me give it like 500. Canvas dot height 400. And let me style my canvas so we can see it. Actually, no, I'll just draw a background. That's fine. OK, I need a loop in order to do my animation. How do I do a loop again? I create my loop function, which I call initially loop. And then I do my recursion. So remember, I, if I just write loop, sorry. If I just do this uh, loop and I called it, it would create an infinite loop, right? It would just pom, 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 pom. I want to recall it, then wait. Then call it, then wait. This is a request exactly. So instead, what I do is I do request animation, animation frame, and I pass loop as the function to call. There. I now have a recursion. Now, I need loop to actually do something. Draw. And so I call draw from here. And I draw, draw something like con, uh, context.fill rect uh, 0, 0, 0, uh, canvas.width, canvas.height. There we go. And I have my rect triangle. Uh, I want to give it a color. How do I give a color? Okay. Cool. All right, good. So I have my, let me do light blue. There we go. Okay. So now what I want to do is have a ball bounce around. I want a ball to go and bounce on the walls. What do I do? Right, okay, so the first thing I, do, I need to do is have a function that knows how to draw a circle. I always forget how that is done, so I ask Google. Draw circle canvas HTML. Uh, draw circle canvas, here we go. And we da -da -da, begin path, arc, copy that. Go back to my function. And I'm going to make a function called draw circle function. OK, so we called our context context, not CTX, right? So I have to update that. And instead of stroke, I want to fill. Wait, uh, yeah. Context.fill. And I want the, the x, y, and radius to come as arguments to the function. Let me now call it. Draw circle. So let's do 100, 100, and let's say 20. Nothing happens. Why? It's the same color. Look, yeah, exactly. So I have to change the color. 
to, I don't know, red. Boom. Make sense? Okay. So now that I have the circle, cool, I know how to draw a circle. Let me create some data that we can then manipulate so the ball can bounce around. We need data to represent the circle. So const game data. Um, let's call it ball. And our ball should have an x of something, doesn't matter. Um, let's say 100, y 100. <laughs> and a radius of, let's say, 10. Okay, so now let's, and, and let's give it a, um, a delta, an x delta and a y delta. Why do we need an x delta and a y delta? Because we need to move it. We need to move it, exactly, exactly. So x delta, so that would be one, y delta also be one, cool. And so here what I want to do is draw that. So draw circle, game data dot ball dot x. Now instead of writing game data dot ball dot whatever, game data dot ball dot whatever, instead let me just create a local variable called ball and do game data dot ball. And now I can just do ball dot x. Ball dot y, ball dot r. Cool. Okay. So now we need to change it somehow, right? We need to update it so it begins to go move around. So let me call, create a function called update. And I will call it from here. So at each iteration, it's going to draw, update, draw, update, draw, update. Okay, so what do we want update to do? Well, we want to change the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the ball so it moves, right? So we do, um, let's get access to the ball. Then do ball.x should be equal to ball.x plus ball.x delta. Ball.y should be ball.y plus ball.y delta and the ball moves. Cool. By the way, one quick thing. If you want to add something to itself, instead of doing that, what you could do is just this. Watch this. This means the same thing as this. So instead of writing ball x equals ball x plus ball x delta, you could just say ball x plus equals, that is to say to itself add ball delta. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, this is just syntactic sugar. Syntactic sugar is what you refer to when the syntax gives you like easier ways of doing the same thing. Okay, so this means exactly the same as this. Any confusions about that? Okay, so if that's the case, then why don't we get rid of this and we change this to plus equals. Okay, and we get the ball moving. Cool, but when the ball leaves, it leaves the game, right? So we want it to bounce and come back. How do I make the ball bounce and come back? You tell me. First of all, let me make the, the actual thing a bit smaller, the board. So let me have it be 300. No, go away, Siri. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so we want it to bounce, right? So what do we do? When the ball goes past the boundary, we should have it bounce and go the other way, right? So it's traveling. When it hits the wall, we want it to go the other way. Okay. So if ball.x is greater than or equal to what? Yeah. Let, let's not do that minus R for now, just so you guys see the difference. In that case, we are going to flip ball dot uh, x delta delta. Let's whoa in charge of ball canvas dot width. Oh, oops, 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 oops. There we go. 
Um, okay, wait, <laughs> that doesn't. Let's just increase the y delta for now. Just the x delta. I mean. Okay, cool. So that worked. Ah. Uh, okay, so we need to do the same thing for the other side. Else, wait. Can we add or? We could also do exactly. We could do or because either way we have to flip the delta, right? Or all dot x is what? Less than or equal to. How about that? Or equal to zero. Cool. Okay, let's see if that worked. Okay, good. Let's look at this, Nick. Okay, good. But as you can see, the ball goes into the wall, which makes no sense. Why do you suppose it goes into the wall? Yeah, we didn't account for the radius, right? We just said where the center is at the edge. So we need to shift it back. Minus ball dot r. R being the radius. Jogesh, huh? Exactly. So we have to do this one too. So where this is less than zero plus, which is the same thing as, let's see what happens. Good. Yay. We good? So all we do now is exactly the same thing for y. So we can copy this and then just change all the x's to y's and all the widths to height. Uh, x is y, x is y, x is y. Okay, so now we should see, cool, all right, very nice. Okay, good, keep going. Okay, so now let's add a platform. Let's add a little bar at the top. Let's call those bars. I'll have a list of them, but for now let's just put one item in there. Okay, a bar needs to have a location. Where should we put the bar? So the bar is just gonna be like a rectangle. We're gonna, I wanted to put it somewhere like here in this area. Uh, where would that be? Yeah, how do I center it? Right, minus the half of its, its width, right? So minus half of width, its width, and let's have the width be... Um, 50, so 25. Have the Y be, I don't know, 50. And have the width be 50. And have the height be 30. Okay, let's draw these bars. Now, right now I only have one, but remember I'm going to add more. So I need some way to iterate over this list and draw every single bar. So, I need a for each function, right? For every bar, I need to draw it. Make sense? Okay, so let me implement a function called for each. Const for each. Okay, it's going to take an array and a function. And I need to call this function for every member inside of this array inside of this list. Again, I want you guys to use recursion, but I, just to save time and not give away the, the homework, will just do r dot for each, each func. Okay, so now we're going to call this for game data dot bars. Okay. So this function will get called for every bar inside of this list, right? Mm -hmm. So this is where I take in the bar and now I need to draw the bar. So context.text.fill context, fill rect, bar.x, bar.y, bar.width, bar.height. 
Cool, there's our bar. Okay. Um, so let's have it be a little bit thinner and a little bit wider. So let's do... So wider would be this one. So let's have this be 80, half of which is 40. And have the height be 20. Yeah. How about now? Yeah, this is good. And let's change the color just so it's not the same color as the ball. Let's ha how do I do that? Yeah, so context.fill style. Let's have it be blue. What does that look like? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Cool. So, what I want to do is when the ball hits the bar, I want it to come back. In other words, I want the same effect as what happens when it hits the ceiling. Okay? Okay, so we already have the code that checks this. All I need is the code that checks this, right? So we go to our update function. So this is the part that checks the, the walls, right? This wall, this wall, and this wall. Now we need bars. So what we need to do is iterate over all the bars. So for each game data dot bars, here we need to check to see if there is a collision between the ball and the bar. So for every bar, I check, did it hit you? Did it hit you? Did it hit you? <laughs> Make sense? Okay. So let's ask this bar if the ball is touching it. Well, we can use some information. For example, we, if, if Y delta is positive, then the ball is going up, right? If it's negative, then the ball is going down. So what we can do is say, if Y delta is negative, sorry, if it's negative, then the ball is going up. If it's positive, the ball is going down, right? Okay, so if the ball is going up, then what I need to check is the bottom part of the bar and see if the, any part of the ball intersects with any part of the bottom of the bar. Make sense? Okay, so if uh, ball.y delta is positive, is greater than zero, then we're going down. Else, if ball dot y delta is, well, else, <laughs> in all other cases, in this case, ball going up. Yeah, else. It does not check out with how much, but it's got a link. I'll say else if zero, else if greater than zero. But for now, we don't have that case, so it's either positive or negative. Yeah? Okay, so the ball is either going down or the ball is going up. So if the ball is going down, sorry, if the ball is going up, let's do this case first. Um, what do we need to check? Remember that the bar has X and the bar has width. So how do I check to see if the ball has hit it? Anyone? Yeah, how, how do I check that? Huh? Okay, okay, okay. If bar dot x is greater than, okay, but that's only going to give you, the problem is the center of the, the x is the center of the circle. So we need to account for, in Yeah, so why don't we do this? Let's get the ball, um, why don't we do this? Ball x, ball rect x is the ball dot x minus ball dot r yeah that's correct and then const ball rect y is ball dot y minus ball dot r I think in other words 
This is the circle. This is the center. We want this. So we take radius minus x, that gives us here, and y minus radius, which gives us up, so we go come back to here. Got it? Okay. And we have a width const const ball rect width is the uh, exactly ball dot r times two. Yeah. The point you drew there. Are you sure that when it hits the rectangle, the point like it gets near to rectangle, the ball intersects with the Okay, you're right. We could do something more accurate because technically, I see what you're saying. You're saying this. Suppose this was here, and so the ball is, let's see. On the corner. Yeah, exactly. So this is like the corner here, and the ball actually does this. Technically, this is even. If we did this way, this would be a collision, even though I see what you're saying. Technically, this is not a collision. Interesting. Do you have a better option? Make the platform round. Make the platform round. That would we could just do the two circle problem before, right? Yeah. Um, can I, can I say something? Yeah. Again, uh, computing the distance between the circle and the rectangle. Okay, but the problem is, is there's no one point in the rectangle that you're computing, right? The distance between this and what? This part, this part, this part, this part, this part, this part, this part. Well, in, that, in those parts, the sort of like the radius is already the point we have. Okay. We only have the problem with the extra part. Yes, yes, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Keep going. With the other part, when it hits right from the uh, open edge, we don't have a problem there. Fair. So, uh, sorry, wait, just, I just want to hear what he has to say and we'll get back to you. Go. Uh-huh. Be careful, because what if the circle is here? Yeah, but how do you, okay, what if it's here? What if it's there? Do you know, it's not that easy. Okay, yes. We can look at the distance between the center of the circle and the uh, intersection of the uh, diagonals uh, of the rectangle. Here we will have two cases, one for the bottom and the up, and one for the two uh, sides, left hand side and right hand side. Okay, so, yes. In fact, that's actually what I'm going to do, is get one hit from here, one hit from here, one hit from here, one hit from here. But the question is with the circle and accounting for this distance here. Chargish? No, huh. Some numbers of the rectangle and the, the circle, we can compute the distance from the circle to that angle. And then we can subtract it. When you say when we know some numbers, what do you mean specifically? Well, all we know is the x, y with height and the x, y, and radius. That's all you know. From that, figure it out. It's possible, but how? We can... We uh, From here to what? Michev Ur, debut. Okay, love, love. We're going to be here all day. Listen, if. Go. Uh -huh. 
Ok, bai ca ankiu ni jamanak e sketa pti imanas, ce? Bai ca in ce zbor nu vor pe sa sketa? Ce ai spus că nu ești un fel de a-ți face un fel de a-ți face un fel de a-ți face Okay, that's better, but you're still going to have some problems with the variation. Like, at office hours, I call it Okay, guys, come back. <laughs> Okay, so as you can tell, collision detection is actually not easy to do. <laughs> it's not easy to do. So, all I expect from you guys, to keep it simple, is whenever I ask you to do collision detection, is just assume you're comparing two boxes. Don't worry about the intricacies of what's in the box. Just draw a box around it, draw a box around it, and see if the boxes interact. Just to keep it simple. Okay? Okay. So now, um, ball rect uh, height is ball dot r times 2. Okay. So this will give us the coordinates of the box around the circle. Hey, come on, come on. Hey, take it. Hey, hello. So this will give me all the coordinates of the box around the circle. So now I have this box. And I have this bar, which is also a box, and I need to see if they are intersecting. Right? So, one simple thing I could do, by the way, because we know that it's a circle, right? Is why don't we, if the ball is going up, this is the ball, look. Let's find the middle of this and just see if it's less than this, sorry, greater than this and less than this. Wouldn't that work? You find the x here, and you just make sure that it's between this and this. If so, you know you hit it if you're going up. Did I get anything wrong? Wow, Wow. Okay. So if you're going up, what you need to make sure to do is check to see if the if ball dot x is well, we need to check the y too wait just for now just check the x if the x is greater than bar dot x and ball dot x is less than bar dot x plus bar dot width if this is true then we know that we're inside of that x coordinate right Now we need to check the y. So if the ball dot y is, we could even say equal to, or okay, less than or equal to, bar dot y, remember, This is the y. This is bar, this is bar y, right? We need to add the height to bar y to get this. So let's do that. Bar y plus height. Okay. Let's then okay. But we're missing something. We're comparing this to this. We need to be comparing this minus minus radius. Yeah, I know. Just I'll delete it. It's we don't need it. Ball dot r. Let's get rid of these for now. Ah, we'll leave them for now. Okay. If that's the case, guys, 
If the ball is going up and it hits this, what should I do? Do something, do something else, thanks. Yeah, flip the, the direction so it goes down. What do we mean by direction in code? The delta. Why delta? Why delta? is delta. Okay, so. Um, ball de, ball dot y delta, and we flip it. Let's see what happens. Come on, hit it from the bottom. It didn't. <laughs> it didn't hit for in the middle. Wait. Okay, are we going to be here for a long time? <laughs> You're right, and maybe just. Oh, 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 huh, uh huh. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let's let's make our experiment a bit simpler. Let's only change wait, let's only change the y y, not the x. Okay, and let's shift it down a bit. Um, where do we start? X needs to be 150. Okay. Okay, so what we should do is have it hit and come back, but it does not. Why? Bar. Okay, let's try now. Yay! You! You! I. Okay. Shot lava. Yes! Hima, Hima, Hima. Okay, good. Very good. Now. Here's the thing. Remember the ball can go bomb, bomb, and then come this way, right? So we need to check this side too. So that would be ball going down, right? So the X check is the same, whether you're going from underneath or below, right? You still need to be between this X and this X plus width, right? So what we can do is copy this logic and just change the logic regarding uh, this one. Wait, what is it? Bar y hima. This time, we have the bar. We have the circle here. So we're checking this line, which is the y. Miropa, bar y. Wait. Uh, eyes. Uh huh. And this time plus r. Yes, thank you. Okay. What's happening here? Oh, we did greater than or equal to, and of course it's always greater than or equal. Right now it's between this and this, and greater than or equal to this, right? So it shouldn't be greater than or equal to, it should just be equal to. And this should probably just be equal to. Okay, this experiment works. Now I need to do an experiment where it's bouncing on the top, right? So let me move the initial y to zero. Oop, hang on, not zero, sorry. I need to change the y to 30. Cool. Okay. So now let's let it go. Let it go. Let it go. All right. So, um, so now let's change. Where's the update? Let's call. Let's change x as well. But every time it will hit from the corner. I know. I know. Wait. 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 Spicy. Get them. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let's do it. Yeah. We are so cool. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Come on. Okay. Wait. Let me make. The, I know. Wait. I know. Let me make the canvas size smaller. Two hundred and one seventy. Yeah, but just. Mm hmm. Good. Okay, not bad. 
Cool. Okay. So now you're right. Now I need to check like what happens when you hit it on the side, right? But if I told you how to do this and I told you how to do this, can you guys figure out how to do this and this? Yes. Good. Happy. Now, you guys know that game where you have a whole bunch of bars and you keep like hitting them and when you hit them it disappears? You remember that? Why don't we make it so that when you hit the bar, it disappears? Yes? In this case, it repeats the same case again and again. How we can figure out the point of the Kind of if you don't want to repeat it, you can just modify. You can have, for example, the y delta be different from the x delta. That will shift it a little bit, so it won't be constant. It, it's not always going to go 90 degrees. If you go 1, 1, you're going 90 degrees, right? Sorry, not half. Ah, you're going right in the center, right? 45 degrees. If you want to change the degree, either increase y or increase x, or decrease y or decrease x. You understand, right? Make make it all sense, yeah? Does make sense? Come sense. Okay, the pochi. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, why don't we have it so that, why don't we put a bar here that we can move side to side? Yeah. Ooh, actually, why, let's move this bar. No, we should have another bar. Okay, let's do another bar. By the way, are you guys following this code? Is it making sense to you? Really? Because you're going to be writing games like this for homework, so are you sure you're getting it? <laughs> Someone took out their camera right away. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, actually, I think that's enough. You guys already know how to move things around. You already know how to do a hit test. So you just put the two together and you get that, right? You can move it around and get a collision. Yes? Yes. Okay, very good question. So the question was, how did we get this collision? Let's be a bit more careful. So here's what we do. For every bar, why do I say for every bar? Because in the future, imagine me... Wow, wait one second. Actually... I will draw here. Okay. Right now, look, we have this, one bar, like that. And we have a ball down here somewhere that's bouncing around, right? Suppose instead I did this. Um, here, let me do this. You get it? Now it has to hit this one, it has to hit this one, it has to hit this one, maybe even these ones, right? That's why I have an array of balls and I iterate over them, balls, bars. I iterate over them and I draw each one. The drawing part is, is sorry, one second, is this one. For every bar, I specify a color and I draw it. For every bar. So if I have 50 bars, I iterate over every single bar and I draw it, draw it, draw it, draw it. So I get a whole bunch of bars. That part is fine, right? Okay. The second part is I want to know if a ball hit one of the bars. So for every bar, for every single bar, if I have 50 bars, I do this 50 times. For every bar, I say, okay, you, bar number one. Is the ball traveling up or down? If the ball is traveling down, then I check that it's between the bar and that the Y is at the top of the bar. If it is, I know it hit the top, right? Here I say, if, if it's going up, I check the bottom. So I do this, so the Y is the middle, right? Minus radius gives me the top of the ball. I check the top of the ball with the bottom of the bar. What is the bottom of the bar? It's the bar Y plus height. Right? Okay, if they're touching, then I know they, they hit. And I make sure that the X and Y are, uh, the X's are between. Huh? Yes? 
Yeah. Okay. Here, let me do this so you can see it a bit easier. And and there. So three conditions. The Y has to be correct and the X has to be inside of the bar X and bar plus bar plus width. Yes? X, bar X, bar X plus width. So it's a good image to repeat. And when it's going down Okay, so this part is, is the same, doesn't matter if you're going up or down. You have to be between the two, right? So the question is, do you compare the bottom of the bar or the top of the bar? If you're going down, you compare the top of the bar. If you're going up, you compare the bottom of the bar. Ask Sasha. Cool. Is this making sense? Yeah? Easy, right? Okay. See all these like if statements, ands, functions, all that crap we were doing at the beginning? Now you see why. Now this is where you use it. Okay. Um, other questions about game development before we move on? Any questions? Yes. How do you stop everything? How do you stop everything? Good question. So when we say everything, what we mean is an animation loop that does things, right? So as long as we keep recursing here, it's going to run. So your question is, how do we stop this recursion? Yeah? So one thing you could do, let's create a pause. Yeah? Okay, let's do this. So let's have a is pause paused, false. Initially, let's have it be false. And in here, before we loop, let's do if game data dot is paused, we stop, we return. Wait, let me. We terminate our recursion. Actually, this would be stopped, not paused, because actually, if you then did unpause, you would have to then call loop again to start the cycle. Yeah, okay, but um, so if actually, you know what? Why don't we continue the loop but not draw or update anything? So if, pa if not paused, let's do this. If it's not paused, then do this stuff. Okay, so now we just need a way to change is paused. Uh, we could create a key event. Right? You press a key and then you just do, you know, game data dot is paused equals true. And that's it. Next time it will stop. That's one way. Why don't we just do that? That's the easiest one. So let's do, um, so add uh, event listener, key but press. Huh? But we don't have to make it equal true, but equal its inverse value. Yeah, because if it's false, you flip it, you get true. And it will stay hard with it before Good. A function, bless you. Okay, so if this happens, game data dot is paused, it goes true. Uh, okay, good question. Why don't we fl flip it to the opposite of, of is paused? I just not. I not. Sa dasum. Ha! Now look. If I press, it stops. <laughs> okay. Wee. Okay. Okay. John. Um. You don't understand. Okay. No problem. Do you understand what this does? It adds an event so that every time I press a button, it calls this function. That's clear. Okay. Every time I press a button, there's a key called is paused that is initially set to false. Yes? Every time I press a key, it changes that to the opposite of what it is. If it was false, doing this will turn it into true. If it was true, it will turn it into false. So you understand so far that every time I press, is paused will go from true to false, false to true. That's fine. In my loop, I only call draw and update if is paused is false. It's the same thing as doing this. If 
this is false. The moment I say is paused is true, the game stops. Haskatar? Yeah? Okay. So you see how that's the same thing as doing this. It flips, if this is true, if we want to pause, it flips to false, which means it doesn't go into the if statement. Okay. Is paused. If it's paused, what should the value be for is paused? Is paused. If it is paused, what should it be? True or false? Okay, but if you want to pause it, what should is paused be? True. If you flip true, what do you get? If you get false here, will this code run? False. Right. Initially, it's not paused. Later, it becomes paused. Is paused. Paused a. Yete ayo paused a. Yete voch paused chi. Ima yes amen askazbit asmen paused chi. Yete yes sense hanem. Paused a. That's what she meant. But he must suck metsy. He must have it. What a short of it. He must have metsy. Pause at it. He must have metsy. Yes. Yes. No, you add some music. Just lovely. I'm like chilling. Okay. Other. This is good. Other questions? Concerns? We have four minutes. What can I show you in four minutes? Music. Music. No. <laughs> uh, why don't we... I don't know what I can show you in four minutes. Wait one second. Um, let's add one more bar. Wait, wait, wait. Also. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, in your homework, guys, listen. In your homework, you're either using rectangles or images, right? Rect. Hey! Zeus! Yeah. We're using either rectangles or images, right? Both rectangles and images have an X and Y width and height. So the collision detection is just comparing those two boxes. Jogesh, yeah? Left. Um, so let's do width of something less, 30. Height of 20, that's fine. Width of, let's say... Oh, are we past true? Ah. Okay, so let's see if this works. Come on, hit something. Remember, the center has to hit it, which is why... Okay, let's make it wider. Let's have this one be Miropam. 50 with a 50. Come on. Uh-huh. All right. So instead of comparing, by the way, the center of the circle, what we could have done is compared the outer edges of the circle, and then that way it wouldn't cross like that. Cool. <laughs> now what you could do is every time it hits one of these, flip a variable called like visible to false. And then every time it hits it, it disappears. And that's how you make that game where you hit things and they disappear. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, I think that's enough. Thank you very much. Let's take a photo.